Photographers of an older generation may recall W. A. Poucher. He photographed mountains and had several picture books published in the 1970s. He often used a 90mm telephoto as well as lenses over the mid-range on his Leica film camera. Not for him was today's fad for wide-angle. He used the telephoto to make the mountains look like mountains and not molehills. I tend to agree. He showed every detail on a picture-perfect day, and not a mountain half obscured by mist. He wanted his audience to appreciate its breathtaking profile. Nevertheless, there is an unenlightened tendency today for photographers to always use a wide-angle lens for landscapes, and sometimes with disappointing results. I may be forcing myself into a straight jacket because I do use wide angles frequently but not always for landscapes. Beginners think they are the norm for the whole view and then wonder why everything looks so tiny. In the absence of a panoramic lens or several shots stitched together, less is more works better with a standard lens if not a telephoto. The wider the angle, the tinier detail will be. There are two dedicated Olympus wide angle zooms, 7 to 14 and 9 to 18, the former often preferred for landscapes, but why? Well, it gives a very dramatic perspective that is in danger of becoming a cliché, like uh, misty water. Yes, everyone is doing it, which is the best reason for not doing it yourself. The photo will have a huge sky, a boring foreground, the important part of the view now a narrow band in the middle of the sandwich. Better is the 12 to 100 or 12 to 200, their widest angle now equivalent to 24mm film format. Perfect, yes, perfect for landscapes that keeps the drama without losing detail. But let's bend my self-imposed rules a bit. First, this is how not to use a 7 to 14. Can you see St. Ives? It's somewhere there. And in this shot from Farthing Down, you can hardly see Old Coulston. Wonderful perspectives, but not much to show for it. For flat landscapes, an interesting foreground is extremely important. Brackelsham Bay is a challenge at the best of times, so I made matters worse by using the, yes, the 7 to 14. But, in this case, have I got away with it? Although I marvel at the perspective of this lens, it is easy to reduce the scale of mountains, leaving an empty foreground where the presence of a JCB would not be out of place. You would never believe that the distant mountains beyond Loch Leven actually rise to more than 3,000 feet. It works better with closer views within the hills rather than outside them. Derbyshire's Dovedale can be claustrophobic, but the 7 to 14 pushes everything back for the whole panorama, distant and close. Buildings, especially interiors, work better and look dramatic. The medieval craftsmen who excelled in creating these stunning geometric patterns to thrill the senses are now made even more theatrical with a 7 to 14 or 9 to 18 optic. Different dramatic angles will present themselves, and if the cathedral has a mirror, you can let your imagination run wild. However, Beware of converging verticals. An extreme wide angle exaggerates them beyond belief. But leave the floor out and wow!
wide angle lenses are easier to hand hold and depth of field is greatly increased. However, one surprising problem beware of showers. Rainwater on the lens will show whatever the aperture.